Hey guys, how's it going? And I have another video for you. This is another one from Apollo's tournament, and this is the uh, the same same teams. We have uh, Achilles No Heal and Scola, I believe. Um, same people exactly. This was the defining battle before the last siege battle that I uploaded uh, two days ago now. And yeah, well, uh, basically Scola saw the video and they're like, "Oh, dude, like we thought this was really cool. Can you show it as well?" And I was like, "Yeah, why not? I love land battles." Um, I think yesterday as well we had a land battle, so, you know, land battles, again, I think they're the new thing, and I might try and um, play some more, maybe just do a day of land battles or something. I haven't played Rome uh, 2 in a while, so definitely will be good. Well, by when this comes out, I probably would have played quite a bit of Rome uh, multiplayer, but in this case it did. Okay, let's get back straight into it. So we have Galatia, we have the Seleucids, and we have Macedon on the side of Scala. And we have Kush, very interesting choice, we don't see them often. Masilla, and we have Pontus on this side of Achilles with no heal. Now, um, I especially would start, okay, I'm gonna slow it down because it seems that they're about to engage outright. I will start with Kush. Now, Kush, uh, I've brought Kush has slave infantry and Chota warriors, and the, these guys are just fantastic units. Uh, Numidian Numi bowmen, nothing special, like we've seen them before. But uh, Kushite archers, there they are. These guys are just fantastic unit. Um, just something about them, it's like they're, they're better, they're faster, they're stronger. They're just a little bit better, and they hide, as you can see, which is very, very important. Uh, with regards to cavalry, there's uh, quite a bit of cavalry. There's Hippias Lancers from, uh, I believe, Craig, because he plays a lot of Masala. Um, I believe this was Essence, and that would have been uh, scra uh, Scrappy. I honestly forgot who's who on the side of... Um, Scala, but we'll get to that later uh, in the end screens. So yeah, Desert Cavalry, Medium Cavalry, Light Cavalry, Melee Cavalry, the addition the works. Meanwhile, Masilla is just bringing a nice, good, solid roster and just to hold the line, hold the center. Torx Swordsman and some Levy Freeman on the sides, some more uh, cav cavalry uh, in the center holding in. And probably, they're not showing, but they probably have three Gallic Hunters, which are also firing from stealth at some point, so they're going to do a lot of damage. And for Pontus, just a lot of uh, Eastern Archers, Torah Spears, again, just flanking and um, skirmishing, uh, and then with a lot of cavalry here, two Capricogian cavalry and Pontifical Cav for his general. Interestingly, there's a mirror matchup with the Cavs. There's two uh, Capricogian cavalry mercenaries and a light horse. These have two Capricogian cavalry and there's a mercenary light horse somewhere else yeah mercenary light horse they kind of switched roles a little bit over there and with regards to galatia bringing a center of galatian legionnaires galatian swords coming up in the rear at a slight angle probably to provide support towards the center of the line syrian archers and celtic singers um now i believe yeah we'll we'll get to macedon in a bit because he got a lot of slingers but slingers are very good in this in this matchup but then again um, same too many bots. Uh, when you have Syrian archers, so, so many Syrian archers. Something also I found really interesting. I'm speaking very fast because the get that is about to get underway, even at half speed. Uh, yeah, the first volleys are coming in, as I said, from over there, uh, hidden archer units, starting to snipe these Syrian archers. Syrian archers are fantastic, and even when they run out of ammunition, they keep fighting. Torox swordsmen are being held in the back. Uh, not suggested to leave such a distance between your troops. Uh, and formation, especially this, the Seleucid players moving a bit too far forward, whereas the Macedonian player splitting up his formation a bit too much for comfort. Uh, and there's some cavalry over on this side. Uh, Torax swordsmen, you know, um, slingers in the front. These slingers are a beautiful uh, addition to the army roster as it helps with killing the missile units on your end. Wow, that was a rush trying to say all of that. Um, I should start scripting my things more often, but then again, I'm reacting to these firsthand just along with you guys. But now it's a little bit more um, relaxed once the uh, introduction is over. The bonus for Kushite archers, since they can fire from hidden, so they're kind of protected from these slingers, but these slingers are now having a few pot shots at those Hippias Lancers over in that side. The Syrian archers finally see where the Gallic Hunters are, and oh, that is a brutal hit into those Gallic Hunters. 40 of them die, not 35, I lied, uh, <laughs> die in an instant. The formation is now much better when you look at it from this side, I imagine. But let's look at it on this side. Where are the weaknesses in each side of the team? Okay, so um, clearly the Kushat Archers and the Numidian Bowmen are there, over there. Even though they're moving forward, they're defended by this very light infantry over here. Now, Kushite Slave Infantry is 
decent because these guys have peel on and when you have peel on a unit it makes your unit much more much more worth it because you, you cannot lose your flank to that it seems the cav battle over on the side will be lost by the uh, Lancers, by the kush and the massilian player simply because there's a lot of infantry moving in along with the cavalry at the center uh, the slavery free men tried to charge in and drop a few shots into those syrian archers a few kills were obtained but Overall, they are winning the matchup over in the center. The missile skirmish is definitely being won now. The problem is that they are firing a Torx swordsman face on. They should stop. They are getting a bit skirmished down from the side from the eastern archers, but the eastern archers are being now focused by these uh, Galatian Celtic slingers on that side. The battle on this side is quite calm and tame and not much is happening. The slingers moving it a little bit forward. Galatia moving in into the... Um, I'm sorry, the Eastern Arch is moving a bit forward, but Galicia is now moving quite into the range of, pretty much into the range of these Eastern Archers. 150 range, they're, they're actually, honestly, they're a fantastic unit, especially on defensive maps, as we were discussing earlier. These um, Taurus Spears coming in to support the Kushite flank, whereas these uh, Citizen Calf and Hippaeus Sensors are moving in, trying to find a way to break through. So this is actually a semi good idea only if you have a layer behind protecting because this makes it very easy for a calf unit to charge through these calf uh, the salusa player is playing quite weak being very weak this is too far off these tower spears need to be used something which i found interesting and i'm saying the pikemen are placed into in between the thorax four thorax swordsmen in the center and then Taurus spears on the side and then the pike units these guys are charging and throwing their pila into those Taurus spears and that's a very smart idea simply that would have been a very smart idea if they charged in simply because of that very same reason which just happened now these levy freemen got um, basically just they're being peppered down why didn't you charge them in whenever you see Taurus spears and you have that opportunity charge in a cheap unit so they stop firing as we're saying this, finally, uh, Masilla is moved forward and uh, has made a gigantic mistake. Uh, no, actually, Pont is making a mistake on this side for not moving a bit more forward. When such an opportunity presents itself, Galatia should have just charged in, pulled back its troops and charged in a few. So pulled back into something like this, so it cannot be flanked by um, the Pontic army and had taken advantage of this situation by pushing in and starting wreaking havoc into the back lines of the Massilian player. Massilia was way too forward. Uh, at the same time, they needed to have a solicited player charge in. Uh, with, the, with that said, we have the Kushite slave infantry charging in. They are not getting that many kills, but they did absorb a lot of ammunition from the front lines and now Taurus swordsmen are, Turk swordsmen are fighting with shuttle warriors which are a fantastic counter to that these numidian spearmen blocking the charge of the Thessalian cavalry over there being a fantastic uh, screening unit these shuttle warriors charging in these numidian spearmen charging in now numidian spearmen just a light infantry but it's just enough to block that entire flank and keep the shuttle warriors here and which are going to win that fight these uh, Macedonian Taurus spears are being pulled back. More shoulder warriors in reserve being charged into the flanks as necessary. The calf is now taking advantage of the weakened flank on the side of the Macedonian player. So much is happening at the same time. It seems finally Pontus has charged forward and is trying. Yeah, exactly what I, I was saying. Galatia needed to start pulling back because now it kind of got surrounded a little bit as its ally was not yet engaged and. We tried engaging in a little bit with Masilla. It did break a lot unit of the Freeman, but that is nothing. These Galatian swords stopped the Pontic swordsmen from charging into the Syrian archers, and the cavalry over here is trying to its best to flank and support the rear. Now, the problem with this is that one, you're losing your missile archers missiles really quickly for no reason whatsoever, and you're not going to get surrounded by the Capricogian cavalry which is not going to do very well. As we're saying this on the, uh, let's call this the right left flank and that's the right flank. On the left side of the map, we have Macedon, which is turning, uh, curling around and beating uh, the Apitonian cavalry over here. So Kush is quite um, struggling to hold this flank. It's holding the center, 
uh, this center-ish, uh, le leftish center area, but it is struggling to hold the massive charge of cavalry that came this side along with the infantry that moved forward. As I'm saying this, this came at a detriment to the, towards the center. Finally, the troops are being moved forward. Now, your general, always bring your general close to your units. And on a field battle, never bring your general as a land uh, a foot unit. Always put it on a cavalry. Why? Simply put, your units have weak morale. Cavalry general does not break as easily. You can charge in, you can do so much damage. There is an opportunity for a charge over here. Charge in. Th one of these... Oh, man. This is this is what I'm talking about. If you have general who is cavalry, you bring him forward, you charge in, you break through this. They will not catch you, you'd kill their archers. You don't kill archers through missile fire. Missile fire is used to break heavy units. Missile fire uh, Missiles are killed with cavalry. I mean, yes, you do skirmish each other out, and it seems that the Syrian archers are indeed winning against these Celtic Slingers and these Gallic Hunters, but that is not what you want to be doing. Because they have more. You need the, the first uh, team member that manages to get cavalry to the other side. This is a perfect spot where I was talking about. You can actually break through that side quite easily with Cav and do so much damage to these Gallic Hunters back here. What they are not doing so, and this is costing Macedon the flank pretty much because they allowed the missiles to go uncontested. Meanwhile, Pontus is wreck wreaking havoc on the Galatian front, breaking through on every angle. The general had to be pulled in to fight um, Taurus Pierce, which is not very ideal. There is covering fire, but now Citizen Cav is coming in, and if the Citizen Cav breaks through, this is going to be utter chaos and complete collapse of the right flank of the. Um, Scholar, I, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, man. Uh, mates, um, I'm sorry if I'm not. I'll actually ask you later on if it's possible that I can try to pronounce it in a way. So Macedon, who seemed to be winning, actually ended up losing his flank desperately badly. And this had to do something with maybe perhaps the overcommitment of troops into the Shoto warriors and not getting his cavalry through. He had the right idea of pushing his cavalry in. He created a very, very, very good anvil on this side but there was no hammer to smash in the troops in the rear. And that is what you need. You need a hammer and you need an anvil. You cannot have one or the other. In the case of Galicia, definitely it was a good hammer, but very bad anvil as it's collapsing entirely. And units are being circul uh, isolated and they're having to fight on multiple fronts. These Medjian cavalry are trying to hold the Macedonian cav. They will hold for a while, but they cannot hold forever. This general over here is desperately trying to hold the flanks, but this game has been pretty much decided at this point. Well, I would say decided, but at the same time, finally we see some uh, action on the center. The um, Massilian general is struggling to hold his troops in position. These, why are you doing this? Oh, okay, you sandwiched a unit of Torah swordsmen between a pike and a Torah. Exactly, this is the kind of situation you need. Pick up units one by one. The problem is these Shoto Warriors are going to rip through these Torah swordsmen. Shoto Warriors are designed... I mean, look at their swords, right? Look at their amazing swords. They're designed to chew through heavy armor. Always bring a few units of light infantry, because they tend to do really well against Shoto as they tire them out and you kill them really easily. Now, um, this Celtic, uh, this uh, Slinger, this Macedonian Slinger over here trying to do some damage against these Shotos, but now these Shotos are charging into Thessalonian. The Macedonian army has been shattered and broken and it is running off the battlefield. And slowly but surely, the balance of power is moving in the favor of Achilles with no heal, as the only player that is still intact is their center, who is about to get rear charged. And this is what I was talking about. They needed a hammer and an anvil, and this did not happen. The general created the hammer and there are enough gaps that he can push through uh, to survival and run back to survival. There is what I mean. When a, a general charges in on a cab, it's usually a very good idea to just keep moving as fast as possible. And not to charge super heavy targets, And but this was definitely an easy target, this torque starts moving into the rear. Um, the medium cavalry charge over here is not going to go that well for the general, but at this point he's just waiting for Pontus to clean up the rest of Galatia. Even if uh, Pontus did manage to surround Galatia, there was a lot of losses on that side. As I'm saying that, Macedon has been completely wiped out. You can see the remnants of the troops over there completely gone. And Shotel warriors are coming in, flanking the units of uh, Seleucid army into submission pretty much. And at this point, Galatia is bringing it back at some somehow. And is doing a lot of damage. Galatian engineers are definitely a very strong unit. And they can deal a lot of damage uh, from prolonged combat. Of course, they will eventually break. And they have been very heavily depleted. So it's not the 
optimal condition, but let's put it like this. Galicia should have won very easily against Pontus um, in the situation it was in. All it had to do is just pull back and start providing support in reserve. Support the Seleucid player who had the superior troops to Massilla, had more firepower, was winning the um, missile engagement in the start and they had to capitalize on that. Because the missiles would have been the major thing that would have killed these pikemen and these pikemen are the ones that are doing the most damage. Now, that did not happen. So what happened? It, this collapse happened and this collapse was a very messy fight trying to set up a new line, being surrounded and, uh, you know, being utterly overrun on that flank. As we're saying this, Kush is trying to hold the center, uh, take back the center from the Seleucid player. Because if the Seleucid player does actually... What is the Seleucid player doing? The Seleucid player needs to be falling back. Not for... Oh, that Torx Swordsman is going to win the game for... Achilles with no heal. That 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 Torx Swordsman actually won the game for Achilles with no heal. It actually genuinely won the game for them. Because why did you overcommit one, two, three, four, five, six units over there? You needed to send units to help Galicia clean up Pontus. After that, um, you've pretty much cleaned up Massilla. Massilla's almost gone. If Pontus was cleaned up, would have definitely been your victory, even though you were a bit negative. But Galicia could have come surrounded the Shoto Warriors, and as good as Shoto Warriors are, they would have lost completely. This was a, quite a de evenly matched game. If they won, uh, won, you know, both sides. No, it was not an evenly matched game. <laughs> what am I saying? I mean, it's coming down to a wire, yes, but it was not evenly matched in any way, shape, or form. I don't know what the hell I was saying there for a second. My brain was like, oh yeah, tr let's try and be fair, but I'm, I'm being honest. The Galician uh, did some gen genuine mistakes. Um, Seleucids did not push enough. I must say as well, though, Massilla uh, let his troops be uh, eliminated really easily in the, sen uh, the start and overextended a bit, opening a very, very dangerous um, opportunity, which thankfully for at least with Ohid, it was not exploited whatsoever. Meanwhile, um, the Kush. Uh, he, he essence played almost flawlessly. His main struggle was cleaning up that calf charge. Yet at the same time, I must say there were a few gaps that could have been exploited if the other player was taking note. Notably, this gap over here, which there was enough space for him to charge his cavalry through. And if he charged his cavalry through and the shoulder warriors on each side tried to stop it, it would have slowed down. It would have allowed the Shota to be attacked from the rear. So that was definitely a place that the Macedon could have pressed forward. Now with regards to the center, the center it was just a battle of missiles and the missiles won for the... Because Gallic Hunters, is, they are lovely units, they have one problem. Their rain, uh, they're, they're, they're just squishy. Whereas the Seleucid had Syrian Archers which are just a fantastic, fantastic unit. And this is what I mean now that the uh, cavalry is pretty much still alive. These armored desert cavalry, 180 kills. Galatia is breaking. Galatia was beating Pontus over here. And it just needed a little bit more help from the Seleucids. The Seleucid overcommitted into a place that they shouldn't. And now they are surrounded and they're going to get rear charged. And this is going to cause a mass rout. These uh, Numidian spearmen, uh, wow, these Numidian spearmen did really well. 200 kills, Kushite Royal Guard. Um, yeah, the, the Kush, of course, just getting loads and loads of kills, and at this point, they're just cleaning up. They, they did a fantastic job in this game. The shield bears is just pretty much what's left. These Tor spears are broken, and that is game. So, let's see how this all went. So, uh, Essence was indeed. Um, Essence was indeed Kush. Scrappy was Massilla. Massilla uh, was holding the center. Really good use of your missiles there, and holding on just long enough for the others to come help you. Pontus doing a very good job in overcoming uh, Galicia. However, Frank, uh, you had the opportunity to actually win the game if you just fell back strategically while starting to pressure us a lot more with a couple of units. You know, you just send two units of Galician Legionnaires, the rest of your army, hold it in formation, and you would have won. Uh, Gorakos, uh, you, yeah, you did really well most of the game. Again, some mistakes you did, you didn't move your troops in formation, you let your general way too back, you caught a general which is a spear unit, you should have gotten a cav unit, you needed to have a solid um, 
melee cav especially for the end or else a really nice charging um, uh, shock unit of cavalry box blood uh, you got kind of an annihilated on the side with Kush you had the opportunity to charge in and you had the right ideas the right idea was that you um, committed I must say most of your cavalry into one part of the formation and supported it with Torx, uh, swords, uh, swordsmen, and hopefully days. The the issue came when you came to engage. You kind of decided that your units are going to fight one to one with shoulder wars, and shoulder wars do really well. As you can see, they got three hundred thirty two kills on this one, which is really healthy. Two hundred fifty, you know, all across the board, an average of two hundred two hundred fifty kills. Shoulder warriors, Gushers slave infantry. You don't expect him to get kills, but this guy got 113 kills. They are a fantastic unit and they can do a lot of damage. You had four units of the Saline Cav, could have gone a little bit further, perhaps next time. Um, with regards to Galatia, again, you did really well. It's just you weren't playing a 1v1. You needed to support your allies more than just for on your side, and you ended up losing the fight anyway because you got surrounded. Um, with regards to Craig, uh, just yeah fantastic game and scrappy did really well with regards to missiles but then of course his troops which were mostly Masili Torah Spears and Torah Swordsmen started losing to the pikes uh, of Gora Chaos which did all enough damage and the Torah Swordsmen and the Torah Spears shot a lot more now if there was anything you could have done better maybe perhaps your Levy Freeman charged into the Torah Spears locked them in place whereas your other uh, troops did more damage anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this this is of course another video from the qualifiers of Apollo's tournament. I hope you if you did enjoy it uh, and you want to see more, subscribe maybe. And if you do have your own games, your own epic games or games you want me to criticize to analyze to discuss, uh, please send them over. I'm gonna start more than just giving a commentary. I'm also gonna start giving suggestions. What can be better? What can be uh, you know can be improved? Now, with regards to that, I am not an expert in Rome. I think I'm a decent player. I think I can play relatively well what I do have however is I have now gotten quite a good firm on the basics of the game and what can be done what can be done to improve it's completely different um, thing from you know it's easier said than done pretty much I can give commentary and I can say oh you could have done this better doesn't mean I could have done it better it doesn't mean the situation you were in I would have done it better this is just constructive criticism if you want that to happen I'll definitely start doing it more often just tell me in the comments down below because it's something I do enjoy and you know I learn the reason why I'm getting so much better at this game because I keep uh, watching replays every day at least two replays almost at this point two three replays every day where I just improve my technique and I just you know improve my technique by viewing other, how other people play this is goes across all strategy games strategy is preparation and if you prepare yourself okay if I see the situation I need to do this you don't need to think twice like ah oh, will it work that for example that Macedonian calf charge that could have gone through two units of Shoto why would it have worked if the if Asnes didn't notice and then pull his troops in your his his missiles would have been lost if he pulled his troops in his shuttle wars would have been charged into the rear and even though you were losing one unit of calf you would have killed two units of shuttle put a gap a bigger bigger gap into his wall and charge your cavalry in instead of having a messy melee um with regards to frank you would have um retreated further back tried to rebuild your wall in a, at an angle while providing support to um not to uh, solicit player. Anyway, enough with this. If you do like this kind of uh, commentary, please let me know and I'll try to provide. For anyone else who just wants to send me replays, let, just let them come in. I have a bit of a backlog at the moment, but I'm trying to catch up and I promise I try to, to publish as much as I can. Now, with regards to that, uh, thank you guys for the support. We are at, uh, I think, 222 or uh, 23 subs at the moment and uh, that is just insane for me uh, so I just want to say thank you hope you guys are doing well uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night wherever you are and uh, take care guys see you soon